Good evening. It is Monday, August the 19th. It's about 6, 10 p.m. This is meteorologist Shay Gibson bringing you a preliminary forecast for the Cora Indigo Cup to Georgetown, sponsored by Ashley Yachts, uh, coming this Friday afternoon, lasting overnight into this Saturday morning. Uh, so, yeah, we're looking at a long-term east-northeast wedge setup starting tomorrow, maybe a little bit more northeast to start and veering east-northeast and pretty much holding an easterly pattern through Friday and hopefully through Saturday day as well. So let me go ahead and put myself down here in the corner. Here's the splash page for the CORE website. When you go down, you see the uh, Indigo Cup sponsored by Ashley Yachts here. We click on it. The skippers meeting is going to be on Thursday at 5.30 at 3 Lockwood Drive at the Ashley Yachts. Uh, location so that's where it's going to be not too late to sign up for this event if you haven't already so please do races will start at three o'clock p.m and then uh, also another start time at five o'clock p.m for the other classes so uh, that'll be the start time for that so let's go ahead and take a look at the wpc surface map as we get into to wednesday morning this great lakes high pressure is going to be moving in and as far as uh, even tomorrow where we have a, an old pesky front that's sitting just inland of the coast right now is going to push offshore as this Great Lakes high pressure sets up. This is going to be the long-term event. This, this high is going to set up here, become a blocking pattern. It will start to slowly expand to the east, push this front to the south and to the west. I'm sorry, south and to the east, and open up an avenue of northeast over to east-northeast winds for several days. And if, as we go forward from here, looking from Tuesday into Wednesday, we see the highs sinking a little bit south and starting to expand a little bit more towards the southeast. That front uh, gets pushed a little more south. And then we get into this pattern where we see the backdoor sea breeze effects coming in across the area on Wednesday. So looks like Wednesday, Thursday are going to be moderate winds building in behind the sea breeze. Backdoor sea breeze oscillations really crank up along the coastline. Uh, the big question is, will it be northeast or east-northeast? Uh, as we get into Friday, and that I think what, what we're looking at here, as we go through the WPC surface map, we see the ridge start to expand off to the southeast, as mentioned before. Um, one thing to look at is this warm front offshore as we get into Thursday. So we're still talking four or five days out. A lot can happen between now and then. When you get a long-term pattern like this, sometimes the winds, when they get out farther out over the Atlantic, that easterly return flow starts to build a little moisture into it. So we end up with a, we end up with a moisture pocket as these winds come out and in and the, and the front starts to erode, we get a little bit of this warm air advection that's occurring. Instead of this cool air advection that's occurring with that northerly element, now with this east wind, we get a moisture slug that starts to build in what's called a short wave. And that develops sometimes into low pressure. And that's what I might be worried about for Friday is if we get this warm front activity pushing into the coastline, we start to get a kink in that that looks something like this. And we end up with like a little pinched off low or just an area of low pressure that really just it impacts the wind. So looking at that on Thursday, and I want to just take it out to Friday here, see if I can get my arrow to work again. And we see the kink in the trough happening just offshore. So the GFS is sniffing at this just a little bit. The concern is that we have some offshore nearshore troughing mixed in with warm front activity that creates this short wave. And as we get into Saturday, it looks like it resolves just a little bit, but that's going to be the big thing to be looking for. We want to keep that east-northeast wind coming along. A lot of the wind forecasts are showing it, but it's just something I want to point out is, is that could be a potential to back winds offshore or be more north or north-northeast with less speeds. It tends to take some of the pressure gradient out of it, the, low, the troughing does, and it tends to um, bring some rain and possible showers as well. So that's just something to consider. If we look at the forecast, I'm just going to pick the capers near shore as a point reference for this. Uh, when we go run all the models for this as we run out through Thursday, we see that east-northeast wind building up moderate to even possibly strong values. Wednesday and Thursday, I think, are going to be our strongest days for this. And we're looking at 16 to 20, maybe even low 20s on Thursday. As we get into Friday, the gradient starts to weaken as that high pressure sinks farther south. So we're looking at it being here Friday morning by Friday evening or into Saturday. This ridge is starting to really settle down into the Carolinas. And that's why the gradient is going to slowly start to fade, which that's not a bad thing, considering we don't want to be in the 20s like we were on Thursday. Now we want to be settling down for the race time in the afternoon to be in the mid, maybe low to mid teens or maybe upper teens peaks. And so the models are really, really wonky right now on this. But I, I think as long as we keep that east northeast flow going through the start time, I think we're going to keep this 11 to 15 or 12 to 16 knot ranges by the time we get into the afternoon on Friday. Uh, overnight, typically what happens overnight is the winds will will want to back a little bit more north-northeast. 
So as we get this east northeast coupling parallel to the coastline during the daytime, especially with sunshine, we get that east northeast sea breeze connection or sea breeze oscillation, not so much a circulation of wind, but it, it's really it's just low pressure being drawn to high pressure, um, low pressure along the coast being drawn to high pressure inland. And then we get that that moderate to strong build. Whereas we get into Friday, it's more of an east flow that's coming in and it's starting to fade. The gradient's starting to fade a little bit. But overnight, the winds tend to want to come back to the north and north northeast at lighter values. So uh, that's what I think will happen Friday night. We'll probably go down to 8 to 12 knots overnight, hopefully no less than that. Uh, as you head farther north up towards Georgetown, the gradient may weaken just a little bit where we may drop down 6 to 10 knots overnight as we get towards the uh, overnight hours. Now, one thing to, con to, to notice here is that our uh, Winya Bay range sensor is down. We think it's due to cellular signal or signal coverage, and we're looking to resolve that. We just had some other stations repaired in the Charleston area, but this one's down. It's uh, I hate that because we need that one for this event, but uh, we can also look at the Georgetown sensor up here, which is kind of close to where the finish, actual finish is or where the marina is. Uh, that could give you some guidance there as well. Uh, a little bit farther up to the north is Merle's Inlet. This could actually help with some of the supplement the data gap that we have in that area too. But I think we tend to look back a little bit more offshore. Looking at the model view for GFS going out to Friday. And what I was talking about is here's Friday morning right here. We get to about 2 in the morning. We get to uh, 8 a.m. And as we get into the afternoon, we start to see a little bit of that overnight Friday night to Saturday. Some of that. Um, I'm sorry, this is the Euro. This one actually holds up the Eastern uh, swell. I don't know why I thought I had the GFS put in first there. Um, but the, the Euro holds this East Northeast wind in place pretty good. It's the GFS that we start to see some complications occur as we get into Friday morning and into Friday afternoon. You can see down here where this little kink is, where it's starting to develop a short wave. And that's what we're going to have to really watch as we get into Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Uh, but other than that, you know, I, I'm going to stick with the models with that 12 to 16 knot range as we get started on Friday and then uh, bleed it out a little bit overnight and finish a little bit on the lighter end up near Georgetown with north northeast winds at about six to 10 knots, maybe seven to 11. Now, look at wave action. Like, again, I'm going to take the Capers near shore buoy as a point of reference. Uh, it looks like we're going to be building the swell as we get from tomorrow and Wednesday into Thursday with that, with that uh, stronger east northeast gradient really piling up. Uh, some wave action out there. We're going to get up in that four to five foot range, four feet more likely closer to shore, five feet farther offshore, 15 to 20 miles out. This is five miles. So we're at four feet. So just keep that in mind. It could get a little bit bumpy with a shorter period. We're going to be going from a 10 second and dropping down into about a, a five to seven second period as we get into Friday night uh, with the direction of 100 degrees. So it's about east by south, just past east winds by about 10 degrees on that. Uh, if we look at the wave, uh, surf line here. We look at Friday, 8 a.m. I'm just picking a point just off of Bulls Bay here and um, going through with it. So we're at six feet, 2 a.m. Friday. We go in time. We start to see this fall off five feet. And then as we get into Friday afternoon, the swell starts to come down even more so overnight into Friday night. You can see how that swell action really comes down to about four feet and you're about seven to eight miles out, six seconds. Uh, and so that sort of proves it, right? And we're all looking right about east by south winds at 100 degrees surf lines a little bit more on the 90 degree angle um, offshore out there that could vary i think the farther offshore you go the more east northeast it is and closer to shore more 100 degrees it's going to be uh, but that that's pretty much it but i love this map from from a uh, surf line because it gives you a really good idea what the, the swell is going to be doing at these times looks like pretty good swell the winds can be more in line with what the waves are doing so there's not going to be a cross cut like a south wind across the east northeast swell so that's a good thing so at least you know what to expect out there. Uh, again, always encourage you to look at the corn buoys uh, for your actual um, wave heights. Now, the corn buoy, unfortunately, another point of data that's down is this one. The cap two wave at the Capers Nearshore buoy is down, so there's no wave action out there either. But uh, I think the forecast is going to speak for itself pretty good. Uh, temperatures look really well, though. We're going to cool down. Uh, we get into the low 80s by Friday in the afternoon, maybe low to mid 80s out over the harbor. Wire temperatures are still about 83.7 degrees, so it's going to feel pretty good out there. Uh, low 70s for lows overnight, and uh, yeah, it's going to. We're finally getting rid of some of that heat this week with this east northeast wind settling into the area. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and um, sign off from there. But just know some changes could occur. 
between now and Friday, I'll be speaking at the skippers meeting Thursday. I'll probably issue another forecast Wednesday night, just as a, uh, just to see what happens in the next 48 hours. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk again on Thursday. See you then. Everybody take care and uh, look for the next forecast.